to my shop. Well, before I start showing you what I built last week, I have to talk about myself. Actually, this is the purpose of this channel, um, to document uh, my way through, well, depression and what depresses me and, uh, in a way, how I do overcome these things. Uh, okay, I know the, the actual build video will be uh, about half an hour um, and so I'll, I'll uh, make it quick. At the end of uh, the week before last week, well, eight days ago, uh, actually I've been in the state of, uh, well, uh, not knowing how it will go on, what happens with me, what happens with my house and all of that. And I've been in the middle of, of some uh, um, conversations about how to uh, manage uh, to uh, well keep on living the way I do with the uh, amount of money I do have so in a way uh, up to today for the last eight we uh, eight days I had uh, 10 euros to spend for for my living and for getting food and all of that but nevertheless this um, this is uh, something I could uh, handle very well. Besides that, I thought about, well, other than sitting on the sofas, uh, sleeping all day long, uh, I could actually go into my shop clean, start cleaning. And I started cleaning and I thought about, well, um, the best thing for the shop and also for making videos would be uh, having more camera angles and having better ang uh, camera angles and better ways to shoot this. So I came up with uh, a camera crane. All the ones on the, who follow me on Facebook know about that and uh, as well I posted a daily update on, on YouTube. Um, another thing, this led to something which I never thought uh, would happen as I uh, started this channel. Actually, uh, one of the last videos, I don't know which one, had been my video 100. So I made 100 videos on uh, public on YouTube uh, up to now and this is a great thing and I guess when I'm doing 100 videos, there are people out there interested in what I'm doing and uh, also people who are interested in me, Peter as a person. And this is also one thing which I found out over the last couple of days. Uh, there have been a lot of encouraging comments and I like to thank everyone who commented on, on my videos for that. Because this is something which actually brought me back into the shop, uh, despite of, as I said, sleeping on my sofa. So, in a way, what did I do? I made myself a camera crane. Okay. Looks kind of funny. The arm is about four feet long. And uh, it is pivoting on kind of a upside down lazy Susan I call it. So I made the, the ball bearing <laughs> myself and also this arm it's just out of some cheap material you can get over here in Germany but uh, in the end uh, I used only stuff I had laying around. Uh, so this is made out of well, some people call it scrap wood, but this is made out of wood I had been laying uh, had been laying around. Okay, now I'll describe something of this uh, camera mount, and this is the versatility. Other than well, some other people had some some things to move around, but I want to have uh, this 
as the the arm is that long, I can cover a quarter of, of the space uh, of my shop without having actually the ground um, involved. So I have a mount up here and I can easily remove that, the whole, the whole crane, and mount it to another place. So here's one. And these two are meant to uh, cover the my workbench here in the back. So I'll get some footage of of the uh, of me making something at the bench, uh, other than doing it on the table saw as I did it for the last year. Okay, so that's my camera crane and enjoy the build video now in the following uh, half an hour I said. Uh, another thing, I st I'm still in need of, uh, well, in need of some uh, money to keep my shop running and uh, I do want to have everything for free on my channel. Nevertheless, I'll put up, um, uh, I'll do some some reverse engineering on that one and make uh, also plans available. But uh, if you consider to donate to my channel and uh, to, 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 then to donate some money or to, to donate some items, you can send them to my address, uh, which is in on my my uh, homepage, and the link down there is uh, the link is down there in this the description box, and uh, this also helps me to well stay alive and do things I like to do. And with that said, enjoy the build video, and I hope to see you on my next. 100 videos coming up and uh, I'll really appreciate all of you being with me. Thank you very much. Chamfering the edges at the rod table ends up the uh, build of the plates. Okay, with this space idea, <coughs> can go ahead and cut these one by two, or well, a little smaller than that, into eight pieces. Although it isn't crucial, I mark the center of the of these mounting 
thingies and I'll do this on, on all and get the same distance to the side. So without setting up a fence or something I can go ahead and drill right into the marks here and have them all in the same place. Okay, with the backup board in place uh, to prevent tear out, I go ahead and drill 6 millimeter as this will be the, the right diameter for the actual dowels and uh, well these special dowels I use for mounting this to the concrete ceiling. something to a concrete ceiling isn't fun at all. Uh, for those of you who are not aware how this concrete ceiling here is uh, built, uh, well it's concrete and in, inside the concrete there, is, uh, there are mats of steel. So in a way when you drill into the, into the ceiling, well you might be lucky not to hit some steel, um, but if you aren't lucky, you hit some steel and then it gets complicated. Okay, so wish me luck when I start drilling the holes for the, for the mounting plate. position for the second hole I just uh, get this one mounted to the to the ceiling with the one dowel here. Now I just start drilling the second hole and then put this aside and finish it because the the drill bit isn't long enough to go through all of this for the dowels. Guess I got lucky two times. Okay, in order to mount the second one I got the spacer here and the second block and now I try to clamp it to the to the first block and see whether I can drill both holes at the same time. It, just eyeballing it, it's not necessary to have it that accurate. And 
don't try to mount this. Don't use too much torque on your electric screwdriver as this is just fine and this might as well break. So just checking whether it's parallel to this. Now off for the rest. everything would have been that easy but this no I can hang hang on that one I guess yeah that's that's quite nice that's okay so now off to the construction of the mounting plate for the actual mount of the arm I'm using these two pieces of uh, well this is beach plywood got a lot of layers and it's pretty sturdy and stable this had been off cuts from um, from uh, the countertops and I'm pretty happy to have this these two will end up in um, in some kind of a lazy Susan and I'll show you how I make it but first I want to have this cut to the to the right width and I'm doing this a little oversized to the to the mounting boards which are in here and I just got a, a, a thin piece of wood shimmed it up here and uh, adjusted the fence to not uh, well to be wider than this because that's what I need for the for the mounting so now I just go ahead and cut these pieces into square the center marked I go ahead and drill the uh, the recess for the for the washers with uh, forcing a bit slightly wider than the washer A drill bit, drill through this thingy and have a backup board to avoid uh, terror. <coughs> okay, now I want to route this groove. I'm using my router table sled and I know a lot of you are anxious and want to see the router table sled but uh, I can promise you within the next I say the next two months you see a whole build of this one because I need a new one okay what I made for uh, made on this one I had the center hole here the eight millimeter center hole and I just inserted a wooden plug into it and this is well not glued or anything just well it's just sits snug and I've drilled a hole, an 8 millimeter hole, which will act as a pivot point. So I can get this onto here and lower it on the, on the, on the router bit. And then turn it around. So now it's just a matter of setting up the distance. And as easy as this, I just take the compass and get the the distance from the center where I want to route the groove up to the pivot point which is the dowel okay so let's go ahead and play with that okay it's just the depth of the dowel what I just adjusted now I just go into the into the, the center po uh, ho uh, point of the hole and adjust the compass to the to the center point of the drill bit which is 
somewhere around here. Well, it's not that crucial. And what I do now is I just take some clamps and clamp down the table so it does not move anymore. So in a way you can do this by just using a board without, well, router sled function or whatever and just clamp it down and have the, the, the position here. Okay, when you put this at an angle like so and not in the di right direction, you get the advantage of, well, more precise adjustment uh, when you uh, when you want to move this on a, to a precise angle. Okay, the third one will do, and that's it, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Everything tightened, and it's time to fire this baby up. Where is the... there it is. This is pretty secure. What I'm doing now is not the uh, safest thing. So if you don't feel comfortable with that, don't do it. in there and now off to the second one. That's it. Now just I just take a little sandpaper and as I didn't change the setting these should be perfectly aligned for the purpose I want to have it. Just take a little sandpaper, clean off the surface here, and uh, I'll show you the assembled version. Okay, I've got these wooden balls, and well, some are concerned that they might wear out or aren't precise enough. But I guess for the purpose I'm using it, it's enough. It won't be a lot of, uh, well, turning around or whatever. It will be just something uh, hanging under the, hanging on my wall and being turned around, well, not that often. So... In a way, I don't mind. So let's see how many I put in here. Just want to leave a little space in between. I guess one more would be too much. Okay. Now it's about the moment of truth. Let's see what comes out of it. Okay, this one goes on here, plus the washer, and now just yeah, trying to get this up a little, wow that's perfect, it's flush on either end, well in the end this will be a locking nut, uh, a lock nut, but this is just a test at the moment, so I see what comes out of it, and I guess it's even running pretty smooth. That's the way I wanted it. Yeah, that's it.
Now that all the pieces are prepared, the holes are drilled and uh, countersunk for the, for the screws, I go ahead and uh, make this well, uh, mounting thing by gluing and screwing it uh, together. Just leave this to dry and then the top part of the Lazy Susan is finished all the way. So this is the construct of the mounting plate. Over here it will be the pivot point and the, the arm is able to move like so and this one here will be a, a slot and I route this with the eight with an eight millimeter straight bit and to start with I drill an eight millimeter hole over here and a ten millimeter hole over here as a starter point for the for the drill bit, so the drill bit can be fully protruded through the wood while I uh, move it on the on the router table. So, in order to route the curve here, uh, well, this this half quarter circle into this plywood, I set up my, my mitre slab the way that this uh, eight millimeter pivot point I had for the, uh, for the groove uh, is the distance to the, uh, to the router bit, the straight router bit, eight millimeters. And the pilot, uh, the, the starting hole here, I drilled with a 10 millimeter because uh, I've got some room for issues and I can start this while it's mounted and I don't have to sink it down. Okay, so wish me luck that this works out and the second one here is prepared as well with a dowel and I'll try to do both of them now. Yes, these two match up perfect and they do. Perfect, that's what I wanted. Okay, now I want to have two grooves in here to actually really align these two pieces and I start I started by marking the center of the piece and the width of the of the of the stock I'm using the width of the stock I'm using I transferred that to the top so in the end uh, I do have to route center here and here on this side and on this side on the fence here i've got some marks indicating the 12 millimeter i'm using 
and now I go ahead and align the mark of the thickness to the one side. So the router will run along here and the groove will be on this side of the mark. One important thing when you are routing on a router table. Actually, the router is turning this way. So it tries to push the wood when it comes up here, not into this fence, but it tries to push it this way. So when you want to have a straight groove, you always have to use some kind of stop block over here. And you ju I just take some scrap piece of wood. Now I align this to where I want to route and just clamp this piece down. The reason for that is to cover the forces going this way, as you can't hold them. You have to use a stop block whenever you are routing with a router sled. Okay, as this fence is just a perpendicular reference, so the actual fence where the router gets its energy into is this stop block. Take. Well, this one, I should have done it after I did this. A lot of play here. Okay. I'm going to glue two pieces, well, two strips on either side, so I end up with a snug fit here. Yeah. That's what I do. Okay, sometimes you have to think first before you start doing something. But the other one, where I got the measurements from, had been, well, had too many knots and this is not free. So without knots, and this is the actual arm I want to use. So here is how I fix the mistake. The this should be snug and I just glued two strips on either side of the of the beam long enough to cover the all the insert here and then I now I go ahead and use my thicknesser to take off light passes on either side so I end up 
with something which will, will fit in here very tight. That's the fit I wanted it, so I'm able to move it, well because it's the other way around, it will be this way around and the arm is able to move and will be held here. What I'm going to do now is I drill the hole in the center of this piece. Attach it to the to the bracket to find the actual point, the actual pivot point here. Okay, so I'll just do the setup for that. So I entered the this the bolt into the hole and uh, centered the whole piece here. Well, try to center it now on uh, on the this uh, hole here and I'm using an um, eight millimeter drill bit just to get the starting point where this hole will go because I need this point for making the curve uh, the cut the cutoff curve here okay I using the compass I just scribed the the line the radius of this of the piece uh, with the hole centered before I drilled the hole, then I drilled the 8mm hole and now it's just a matter of sanding up to the line. Well, if the machine would be on. So I have to plug it in first. Sometimes you don't know what you've got here, where the power is coming from. Time for a test fit, and then this one is almost done. Okay, off, off camera I shaped this second arm here, which is actually just the same. Drill two 8mm hole in the center and round it over the, over the corner. Now it's just a matter, I guess I'll make another one but have this spare at the side because I, I tested this one and it actually worked without loosening or tightening these nuts and it held very uh, very well. Now it's up to making the camera mount and I'm gonna use, um, I can find it, this thingy here and uh, I'm just making an L bracket out of this out of this scrap piece of wood here and uh, <clears throat> just attach this with with screws like it is and then an L over here which will uh, act as the uh, pivot point for the attachment on the arm. The, the third arm I'll make is just in case I need a longer uh, a longer uh, reach out for the uh, for the camera and I guess this also helps uh, an extra uh, uh, an extra light so it actually works well I'll show you in the end with the assembled one I also made two shims which act uh, will, which will go between the mounting plate and this uh, Lazy Susan construction to prevent it from, from uh, 
tipping over. But I'll show you this in the in the in the in the wrap up. Now I go ahead, go ahead and make this one, and show you the assembled piece. Okay, here you here you have a close up of the camera mount, and this is actually one thing that got two bolts here, and the uh, thread for being threaded to the camera. So I'm able to move this in every direction and uh, with these two bolts I'm also able to uh, well pivot this one here, uh, rotate it around and get it to a nice leveled way. For example if I want to shoot a video that direction and I had to uh, get this on the angle. You want to have the camera vertical to the ground. So I'm able to, with this thingy here, I'm able to actually move this the way I want it and uh, end up with a leveled, it's a little complicated, but you end up with a leveled mount of the camera. So this will go the way, uh, either way you want it to. Okay, with that said, uh, thank you very much for following me along and I hope to see you on next uh, week's video and you won't see this one here again because the camera will be mounted on there and it will stay on there as I can move it around. I get some footages from a point up where you are sitting at the moment and one extra point over my lathe to cover all of this. Thanks very much for watching. See you next week. Up to then, it's worth greetings from good old Germany. Your Peter Freitag. Thank God it's Friday. <laughs>